All right, here we are. This is We Play Games. So here I've got another Komei run. I think this one I'm just mostly going to be doing as like a tutorial because I, I it seems like the tutorial aspect has caught on a lot more than the speedrunning aspect, which I'm not surprised about. Um, so that means that like if you already know how to play Japan, then don't don't watch this video. If you already know how to bring the Shogun back in the 1850s, then I have nothing to teach you. But if you don't know how to get the Shogun back in the 1850s, I'm here to tell you that it's 100% doable. It's 100% doable. Um, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through all the steps and absolutely every single beep and bop that you need to do in order to get there. Uh, and, and so again, if, if you already know how to do this, then this tutorial is not for you. Uh, but now we're going to come in here. You're going to set up our outliner. I, I'm going to do this because in the event that people are utilizing this as a tutorial for learning the game, I want them to be able to know how to set up their outliner too. It's going to be really useful. I'm going to refer to it a lot. Um, the reason that we are here in debug mode is because I value my time. I don't want to have to reroll this over and over again. It's going to result in me killing this character a couple of times. Um, but you can do that, you know, like by just literally rerolling stuff off of off screen by just opening a, a new save and then closing it. But I'm here to also show you that if you're learning the game, it's, it's okay to, it's, it is totally, totally, totally okay to do a little bit of, um, re-rolling and stuff in debug just to save yourself time especially like if you're if you have like a family or whatever like why why on earth would you just literally spend 15 minutes doing this unless you like hate yourself so all right so we get to a jingoist so i have to add a, a shogun general to maintain everything being the same way because we killed one of them ah crap all right well, ooh, actually that's really good um well i'll i'll figure out a way to to add anger to them accidentally um just because like they are owed an extra general here because you can avoid what we're doing by re-rolling this part that's that's entirely random why why what am i doing why am i doing this i'm gonna explain i am i am i promise what we're gonna do is we're gonna recruit a bunch of generals because we're gonna need them we are gonna need them we're gonna need them because we uh, we need friends we need friends to hang out with um yeah sure we need to add, we have to add another shogun at general because we we killed one just to make it to make it like clear that we really are just re reloading over and over again until you get this jingoist character um so that's the first thing that that we i actually kind of want to talk about i think that there is a meaningful reason to consider going for pacifist and the reason is this the reason is twofold first if you are in um not not hereditary bureaucrats so you're, if you're in national militia instead of professional army that's going to do a lot for you as japan because this is going to have a minus 25 percent samurai armed forces political strength this is plus 25 percent and the you don't have slavery here but you do have serfdom and serfdom is going to end up being supported by the samurai under under here and so generally speaking people want to move out of peasant levies which is why they re-roll into jingoist and i agree 100 percent. that's very useful getting out of peasant levies is a plus um but i think i think you actually are much better off moving into national militia rather than professional army because you really do want to minimize the size and strength of your of your army and by being a national militia you can fire almost all of them um and still be able to field a a reasonable size army and so i'm going to do that the very first thing that i'm going to research is going to be mandatory service so i'm going to go ahead and do this this for this over explained i'm not going to use any fast anythings so that way you can follow along and have some idea of what i'm doing um so that way it's just going to be the most useful the most useful guide possible but what that means of course is that for the beginning of the game i don't i can't really work on laws in army model i'm a big proponent of being able to work on laws because when you can work on laws you just generally it's it's more useful um to be able to do that we could take national guard national guard wouldn't be bad revolution secession progression speed is is pretty strong when you're trying to crack back down on the shogunate the only thing i don't like about it is it does cost bureaucracy but i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to run this um samurai and petit bourgeoisie that's fine because we're going to have a lot of a lot of uh, legitimacy just because we we are starting with the uh the shogunate in power and as i said we're going to hold him in power until we get to mandatory service now why are we going for mandatory service instead of trying to go for colonization i think 
unfortunately, under this the current patch system, and this is 1.0.4, I don't think it's worth it to even try to fight Russia for this. I, I've now done probably like 20 or so openings for Japan, and the first couple ones, I found that if I rushed colonization, I was able to get those islands, but like that was a small sample size. And the more that I played, the more it became clear to me that because you not only have to research the technology for colonization, but then you have to pass the law. Um, and that's not even like a guaranteed thing. It, you end up losing parts of Hokkaido or all of that part of Hokkaido way too often for it to be worth investing in. And that's why I think that there is actually a big meaningful value to, to looking for possibly a, a pacifist instead of a jingoist here. But I don't want to reroll all day. And, and I just want to get something that you guys can use. Um, but be aware that if you are a, if you are a scientifically minded person, you might want to reroll until you get a bunch of pacifists. That, that would probably be pretty good. Um, so we are working on, on the National Guard. Again, just not because we necessarily want to do it, but because we need something to work on until we get to mandatory service. And if it passes, awesome. All right. I'm just going to work down the line. Um, there's nothing else in here in terms of government that we need to adjust right now. But I am going to I'm going to tell you that if you're if you're trying to do a quick Japan run, then you need to pay attention to the health of this guy. So in in um, in one of the videos that I did, I had no idea who this is. But one of my character, one of my uh, one of my one of my characters, one of my one of my one of my chat members actually mentioned that this person's actually an incredibly important uh, like basically peasant leader sort of uh, the mobilizer and so a pop they are a popular figurehead and and so this popularity here is going to be outrageously useful for you when trying to break down the strength of the shogunate and then i'll explain to you at the end of the whole series why you really should not be afraid of making a very powerful buddhist monks because they're not going to hurt you in the mid game because what's going to end up happening is the buddhist monk conf uh, alliance is literally just going to get plowed under by construction, because you can see the, the types that are here. Like, if these guys have ever hit 40% in your country, as long as you still build stuff, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna worry about it. I promise. But the beginning of the game, you're not doing anything other than making sure he stays alive. If he dies, reroll. Uh, or you know, just reload. Um, this guy does not have to be royalist, but if he is, great, it's a little bit of extra points. It doesn't matter. Ignore your intelligentsia, they don't matter. Petit bourgeoisie will get up here and they'll be happy eventually. And then you get a little bit extra bureaucracy and maybe loan interest rate. That's great. Um, but like, you're just, you're mostly trying to get rid of the shogunate. And this is not just a speed running thing. It's going to be really helpful for you. I promise. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to mislead you. All right. So let's go down to budget. First things up here, taxation level. Down here, this is what you do when you have a very low legitimacy score um, and you want to get a, a complicated build on. And then up here is what you can do if you don't, um, if you don't have a very complicated law bill that we're working on. So right now, because we have just so much legitimacy, I don't feel at all bad running um, high or very high taxes. I think either one of those is pretty good. And now we're going to write a tax bill. So what is a tax bill? Um, as a, an autocratic government, writing a tax bill is just determining who do you want to be taking money and therefore political power away from. Um, that you have as Japan the ability to just do kind of whatever you want to in terms of taxes. Look how much money there is here. But keep in mind that by taking away, by instituting this tax, you are taxing the pops in question, which means you're reducing their wealth. You see here the clout of the shogun is coming from wealth. So political strength, it's coming from wealth. Hmm, interesting, right? Yeah, cool. So if you remove their wealth by taxing the things that they want to buy, then you reduce their power. And that's kind of what writing a tax bill is really all about. Writing a tax bill is really all about punishing your enemies, both in game and in real life. Like that's that's the goal. And so there are some things that are just like easy to tax because they are, they don't cost a lot. Those are sin taxes. Services is also very good. I like services a lot because they're very easy to build on your own. And so they scale up with you while your economy grows. And that's very important when it comes to writing these taxes, right? Because if you if you are taxing um, porcelain, then you're heavily incentivized to want to build more of it, right? Because the more that you build of it, the more the supply of that grows. And then the more the demand for that thing is going to grow. And so by just taxing the things that you want to be that you want to be doing then you get you get good stuff it's it's good trust me it's good it's good green tax is the only questionable one here i think 
I think I'm going to recommend trying not to unless you're new, unless you're experienced, because um, green tax is going to punish the peasants in ways that's going to make it harder for you to get your uh, serfdom stuff done. And that's that's actually pretty big. Conversely, I don't think I care that much about taxing clothes. That's OK. That's fine. Um, it's a lot less it's a lot less useful than taxing liquor and tobacco, though, right now. Liquor and tobacco. All right, so we can we can go ahead and just start um, bolstering Buddhist monks, and I think we can just start bolstering peasants. So by writing out this giant tax bill of all the things that if you buy this stuff in the country, you got to give me all your money. Yeah, it reduces the standard of living, but it reduces the standard of living for the pops that I hate and I'm picking a fight with anyway. So like, I, I don't know why you would never use it's a you control the government, you control the purse strings, use them as weapons. They're they are your ally. And that's going to give you a giant amount of money that you can build with. It, I mean, it is. And like, do not don't be shy about it. Do not be shy about it. And if you need to increase wages for things, you can. And that's a great way to, to adjust uh, strength and stuff. But I don't think you need to do it initially. Um, buildings. So the I don't think there are any automatic switchovers in terms of, of things on Game Start. I typically don't recommend that people adjust this stuff. Oh, right. We can't bolster peasants because we need to um, we need to have road. We need to have road, road maintenance. Yeah, that's where we are. We're on. We're on building. Uh, road maintenance. Where are you? There you are. If you're good at this game, and you'll you'll see that I am not. Um, if but if you are, if you are good at this game, then what you do is you put a road maintenance wherever you are building. And if you're building a lot of things, like like you need to build, you know, hundreds of stuff. My my recommendation is build it all in one location first. Um, I can do shift click, shift click, shift click. I'm gonna I'm just gonna actually minus one. I'm gonna go to a ten stack here. Um, so if you want to do a 10 stack, you can. If you want to do more than that, you can do more than that. And then I'm going to shift click, and then we have the logging camps there. And then I'm going to do a control click and add a 10 stack there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rapidly ramp up my ability to build stuff. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of like gold reserves because I'm just going to be bringing in so, many, so much money. Um, taxation capacity, ignore this. The reason that, that people get worked up about this is because it sounds like you're not getting all the money that you should be getting. But keep in mind that taxation capacity is just the ability to take money away from your people. And most of your people are peasants. And so just when you when you hire tax collectors, which, you know, if you're building if you're building government things that you don't really need, you're you're built you're doing a tax collector. They they usually are just not worth it. They they are pretty bad. They collect a lot of money and don't give you a lot in return. I would not I would not worry about this. I would just right click it so that way it doesn't bother you anymore. It taxation capacity is a problem once you've industrialized. But hopefully while you are industrializing, uh, you will have the the resources flowing around that'll let you do that. So as I said, building we're just building up a giant construction sector in Kansai first because we just want to be able to dramatically like we're taking all this money out of the supply we're not really doing that because we want the money necessarily we're doing it because it hurts the shogunate but by hurting the shogunate we empower ourselves that's that's good and that's what we're doing there with the building market so this is why green taxes japan is like actually totally fine it's just that i don't i don't want to take money away from the peasants that's all if green was being bought by the shogunate i'd a thousand percent be taxing it here because I want to take their money away. Um, the thing is that balance for green at thirty percent just means that if you're taxing green, no one cares. That's that's really what it boils down to. It's not gonna it's not gonna kill them. We're gonna do tea time soon, but not not immediately. Uh, we could do it in Kansai. We could do it in Kansai. Let's do it in Kansai. So I'm just gonna remove these plantations immediately. I'm I, I'm gonna fire everyone who works on those on those buildings. They're gonna get mad. Now, that's going to give me a small little bump in radicals, but eventually those pops are going to go somewhere and, do, and get jobs that are useful for society, and then they'll be happy again, and then they won't be in my way as like a bunch of a bunch of stupid aristocrats that make the the shogunate stronger, and they also won't be taking up infrastructure. So I'm just immediately ripping that that tea out. It does make this worse, but sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it is okay. I I promise. Sometimes it is okay. The last little authority here, you can do kind of whatever you want to with it. Um, it you can do another another uh, decree because there are some decrees that are useful. Like the you have a very small country initially, but it's a very tall one. You have a lot of pops, and so 
agriculture industry can actually be pretty big on Kansai. You're, you're making a lot of things out here, a lot of things out here. And so if you want to just like play around and just slap that on there, you can do that. That's, that's cool. You could do promote social mobility. That's cool too. Um, you could, you could do two road maintenances, but I would not recommend it. I would recommend just being good at the game. I'm not, I am not, I'm not, I'm terrible. I'm going to forget every single time and then I'm going to, I'm going to chide myself. But if you are good at the game, you can play a lot better than me. I, I promise I'm terrible at this. All right. Uh, we got, we got our guys. We got our guys. We got diplomacy. Um, right. We're going to do diplomacy. We want to improve relations here. Good. They're protective and they're disinterested. All right, cool. I, I just don't want to fight anybody. That's as Japan, you just don't want to fight anybody until you can like, until you can, um, Technology we did, culture, sure, sure, outliner, sure. All right, that's everything. I think that's everything. If you don't think that's everything that we just should cover, like, to, to set up, then let me know. But that's 15, 16 minutes. That sounds like a pretty reasonable stopping place because we got it we got it set up and ready to unpause. All right, this is, uh, this is Walker. We play games, and we're just doing, like, a broad tutorial on the Japanese Shogunate today.